This is part two of my little endeavor into these teeny art supplies. In part one, I made them, which by the way, is probably one of the most satisfying videos I've ever made. So go check it out. I'll put the link in the card and in the description and enjoy the show. And today I'm gonna be trying to put these to the test. I have added to my little mix of materials. I've got a little roll of toilet paper because I'm gonna use watercolors. So they clean up as I go. Oh, and you can see I've got a little cup of water. It's quite large, but it's the only thing I had so just lying around. It's a shot glass. Gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> So I'm gonna give you all a tour of my little art supplies. Before I do, those of you who watched that last video will remember that there is a little goodie up for grabs. But this one isn't just gonna be uh, an easy giveaway. I wanna make you work for it. Cause after all, a lot of work goes into making these teeny weeny little things. So maybe a little bit of work on your end should go into getting this one. Let me know in the comments of this video how many times I said a word relating to the smallness of something any of these count in the video where I made these teeny weeny art supplies. Micro little teeny weeny minutia. Smallest small of small teeny tiny miniature. One of the people who guesses correctly will be randomly chosen to win a GoPro Hero 7. Now in that video, you may be wondering how we got some of those shots. This is called a probe lens to demonstrate. This is one of my little Warhammer figurines. But look how close that is to the lens. But look how detailed it is. I can stay in focus and show like every detail. So probe lens I'm gonna be using today to show you up and close as I draw in my sketchbook. Before I get started, a couple more things to cover. One, I need to see things myself. So I have this as a backup for when things get super detailed and I need to get nice and close. Or this, I don't, I don't know which one I'm gonna prefer. I look sort of like a cyborg with this one though, which is cool. Let's open up to our first page, it's the front cover of our little sketchbook. Let's do the Jazza avatar on the front cover. I wanna experience a bunch of different kinds of illustrations. So I'm gonna do some more realistic stuff, some comic book stuff, maybe some random prompts or a character design, something sketchy, something really refined. I wanna push the limits of the drawing experience with my teeny weeny art supplies and see how well they perform. And so far, so good. Now I must apologize uh, for my hand aesthetic. I have been a nail biter and I recently quit. But look, when you're like this close to the the, the pores of the skin can't be helped unless I stop biting my nails, but they're so goddamn tasty. <laughs> what do your nails taste like? Come kind of taste? They look pretty juicy. <laughs> I'm gonna draw my avatar drawing in a teeny weeny sketchbook. This is my 0.5 micro liner. This is it. This is the test to see if it actually works. I'm gonna do the thing of going to the back of the sketchbook. Everyone does that thing. Test the art supply. <gasps> is it working? I need you to work. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> no! <laughs> Come on! There's definitely like some ink coming out. It's inconsistent. But you know what? It's something. I start off with a nose. And that's, a, that's a line. That's something. I would call this functional. Which is more than I could say for my other teeny weeny things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you know what? I need a sample page so I can can just keep things working and I'll probably need this when I get to the watercolors. I'm just gonna tear this out of my little sketchbook. So now I can just duck over here and just go, can you a little scribble, wake up. Oh my God, this is incredibly difficult. <laughs> I think this does tell us that even though I can scrape along, get get some ink out of it, which by the way is already very surprising to me, I think some of our other illustrations in the sketchbook are gonna need to be improvised around that hurdle. So if the watercolors work well, more of a solo watercolor piece. Oof, I don't know why I do this to myself. Now that's actually, that's turned out all right. Let's clean up our line work here, a little eraser. <laughs> Look at you. Uh, that's actually worked. Like I'm erasing close to the lines and there's ink. Ha ha ha. Who's a genius? Sometimes me. Not a lot. Watercolor time. Now, I've got my palette of colors and I've got a mixing tray. I've got my water and I've got two teeny brushes. Oh, and I've got my little toilet roll. First things first, let's start off with uh, mixing up a bit of a skin tone. I need a little bit of red. Let's, let's mix in a little bit of white. Does that work to lighten it? I don't know. Mix in a bit of brown. A little bit of yellow, a bit more water. Let's try it on our test sheet over here. That's all right. Now this is watercolor paper. I've made the sketchbook out of a watercolor paper pad. So in theory, I can work with this as I would on any larger watercolor piece. I should use my little brush for the eyebrows. And then I'll go back to my bigger brush just grab the red, and that's come together pretty well. Last but not least, let's uh, let's just do a nice brown table. 
And for a bit of interest, why don't we just grab a touch of blue and a lot of water and just give it a bit of a backdrop. So I'm getting ambitious. I'm stepping up my game. It's tricky, but it's actually pretty satisfying. And I think really that was the point of this first illustration is uh, it's a bit of a proof of concept. And I think we've proven conceptually that it works. Look at that. There you go, page one of my teeny weeny sketchbook. So I'm gonna fill in the rest of these pages with a variety of different things. Keep your expectations small. So for my first illustration, I thought I'd mix my love of tabletop miniatures with my attempt at creating miniature art. So I set about sketching some space marines in the midst of battle. Now, believe it or not, it was hard to fit a lot of detail in this piece. Go figure. I got part of a second space marine in the foreground firing a gun at least, but even so, there was no way of showing any actual battle or army without it just looking messy. I wanted the main figure to look clear and solid, so I just moved on to attempt some line work. I got about a third of the way into the line of work until the pen just didn't want to cooperate, so I just switched to using the pencil for the rest of the line work. It was a little sad to just be resigned to my little pen not working, but hey, I got something out of it, and the pencil actually did a pretty good job anyway. When I started to work with the watercolours, it really started to get quite fun. I mean, it was still tricky and a little claustrophobic, but I actually felt like I was working with some adorable tiny tools on my teeny weeny picture, and that certainly kept me motivated to make something cool. After I filled the whole page with colour, it all started to look a little bit flat and muddy, but fortunately, because I was working with watercolours, I was able to build up the strength and tone and silhouette in key areas by adding more layers, intensifying the shadows on the main figure, and adding some really contrasting highlights and shadows in the foreground figure as well. So this took about, I think an hour or an hour and a half. It's cool, hard to see what it is, but Gareth just said, oh, hey, cool, a Space Marine. So that means I'm on the right track, means it's somewhat recognizable. But as you saw, uh, a third of the way in, this little pen gave out. But that does mean moving forward, and for the remaining images, I'm gonna be falling back on pencil and watercolor. And I can rest a little easy because I have a couple of skills up my sleeve with working with watercolors that I got from the sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with over 30,000 classes in illustration, drawing, design, business, and loads more. There's a vast amount of great learning resources for things that you want to improve on that you work on already or things you haven't tried before and some fantastic and really highly qualified teachers on there like yours truly. Speaking of yours truly, I also have an epic and huge class coming up on Skillshare very soon. So make sure to head on over, check out the courses that I've done already, familiarize yourself with the platform and the amazing community resources they already have and follow me on Skillshare for when my next course comes out. And you can use Skillshare for free for two months using that link in the description. So go check it out now. There's amazing stuff over there for you to check out and amazing stuff to come. Go check out Skillshare with a link in the description for free for two months and a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. In the meantime, I'm gonna fill in the rest of my sketchbook and I know what I'm working with now. I've got pencil and watercolor and I've familiarized myself with the medium with something pretty ambitious, but I think I, I need to try a variety of styles. <sighs> Let's fill in this teeny sketchbook. For my next piece, I thought I'd start to really lean on the watercolors. So after a really light composition sketch, I jumped right into a Bob Ross inspired landscape, of course, layering in some really nice vibrant colors and slowly building up an epic landscape, but on my teeny tiny paper canvas. By the time I was painting in my trees in the mid-ground and adding details to the river and foreground, I was absolutely falling in love with my painting. It was actually looking really cool, I thought, and I took it as far as I could by moving onto my teeniest brush for some of the sharp details, like grass in the foreground and some dead trees along the river.
With each page, I wanted the artwork to feel unique and attempt something different, capture a completely different feeling with every page. So for the next page, I worked solely with the pencil and went for an illustration of a wizened old man writing in a tome, starting out with some very light sketching and slowly building up the depth and detail. This was a strangely natural drawing process. I mean, the lead is just a mechanical pencil, 0.5 lead, so it's not that surprising that it went down as expected, but I guess I was pleasantly surprised that even though the pencil and page were so tiny, my movement and grip sort of scaled down naturally-ish. I sort of felt like I could still create and sketch and shade and outline with some nuance and get a bit of a flow going, if you know what I mean. Point is, it, it worked pretty well. It was sort of fun. Next, I went back to the watercolors. This time, I thought I'd play with something abstract, creating a few washes of some saturated color gradients and clouds to build onto later. Now, with the foundation laid, I lightly sketched two abstract figures being pulled apart, torn away to different places for different reasons, but yearning to be together. Oh, what a meaningful piece this is. Finalize the piece by adding some white dots inside the blue figure, probably ascending to some higher plane, and then added some embers surrounding the warmer figure at the bottom of the piece, probably burning in hell somewhere. I don't know what this signifies. It's abstract. It means whatever the hell you want it to mean. Last but not least, I thought I'd figure out the strengths of my tiny tools, so I wanted to put them to the test with something extra cool. An illustration of Venom preparing to strike, but with a cloudy watercolour gradient backdrop and an inked look for the figure by using black watercolour paint, which I would come in later and add the detail on top of. At the very end of this piece coming together, I thought I'd try one more little trick, spattering some of the black watercolour onto the page like it's ink spatter. And I thought it worked pretty well in and of itself, and then overall, I thought the piece looked pretty sick too. So I have done it, friends. I have finished filling in the world's smallest sketchbook with the world's smallest art supplies. Now I'm gonna give you the pleasure of the world's smallest sketchbook tour. So here's the opening page. Pretty happy with that, good little warm up. So even though this one isn't as clear as some of the later ones, I still think it looks kind of cool. I really feel like where some of the details have worked out really well, it's super satisfying. This is where I started to feel really satisfied. This is my landscape, obviously inspired by Bob Ross. The colors and, the, and there are some areas of like a lot of detail. The mountains I think turned out amazing. But just the little flowers and the little branches. Oh my God, this is little and satisfying. It's really fun. Like I finished this one, I was like, yeah, that's cool. I'm like really proud of that. This is my wizened old man writing in a tome. But it, honestly, like drawing and shading with this thing was effective enough. I mean, that's pretty cool. This, I was going for something a little more abstract, but I, I like how it came together. Again, it's something different. It's colorful. It's something interesting, which I think is the hallmark of a cool sketchbook that you're touring, is that you turn a page and go, ah, oh, cool. Which brings me last but not least to Venom. I thought it'd be fun to, to try and do a bit of inking. Now, obviously my pen 
sort of stopped working pretty early on. That's to be expected. But then it did get thinking, you know, I was starting to be able to figure out how to add quite a bit of detail with the brushes with these other pieces. Why not try and do essentially an ink piece with the black watercolor and it worked really well. And now with a fully complete teeny weeny sketchbook, I certainly feel pretty proud of myself. If you enjoyed this and you haven't watched the previous video where I built these things, that's a satisfying art project in and of itself. So go check that out. Once again, the link is in the card and in the description. And remember, if you feel like counting the amount of times I say little things, little words, little related word things in that video, and you let me know in this video, you're in the running to win a little camera. Ain't nothing wrong with a little camera. There's a the big, long, hefty cameras, they have their place, but little cameras, you know, it's not, size how you film with it and of course if you haven't subscribed yet and hit that notification bell to join in early giveaways and join in the future creativity and arty party on this channel then fix that now please because i would be most grateful to have your future company here with the arty party crew thank you for watching and until next time i'll see you later